Hey everyone, this is Brother D here again to evaluate some powered parachute crash videos backed by popular demand. I know, it's crazy, but since these kind of accidents keep happening, it's obvious that they're common mistakes. So allow me to share some statements I opened with in my last video. Wind and terrain accidents often go hand in hand. The FAA's Powered Parachute Flying Handbook says this. Crosswind takeoffs and a powered parachute are dangerous and should be avoided, as this exposes a powered parachute to a rollover. Now, a rollover happens when the terrain basically grabs a, a hold of the cart while it's in motion, and while at the same time it's being drugged sideways by a crosswind. Uh, the Powered Parachute Flying Handbook also states that a gust of wind from behind can cause the wing to move ahead of the cart decreasing the angle of attack and causing the cart to descend and at low altitudes such a gust could drive the, the powered parachute the cart straight into the ground. Well we're going to see some examples of what the FAA is actually warning us about. Now it's not only wind that can cause terrain accidents but another thing is poor judgment or what we simply call pilot error. So let's go ahead and get started with our videos. This first video is posted by a user named Wayne Spring, and it's called 2010 Predator Fly-In Wharton, Texas PPC Crash. And there are a couple of examples in this video seen in two separate crashes. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first clip. So it almost looks like the pilot's taking off and then stalls, but that's not the case. He's already landed when he gets lifted back up into the air. It's actually a gust of wind causing what you see here. So let's now look at another crash from the same video that takes place at the same fly-in. Well, you can see how his chute inflates and then he starts getting pulled to the right until he tips over in what's called a rollover accident. Now, similar to the first clip, this pilot is dealing with a gust of wind. I found a couple of comments that shed some light on what these pilots are actually dealing with. First of all, a user named Kennedy2011 says, if you fly midday when the Earth's surface is heating up, you're asking for trouble like these guys. You see, powered parachutes are not normally flown in the middle of the day. They're flown early morning or late afternoon or slash evening when the sun is at its lowest point uh, when it's not shining on the ground so much. One of the things that you're going to learn in your ground studies to become a pilot is that wind is actually caused by the heating of the Earth's surface which causes wind currents. During the middle of the day this heating of the ground can cause what are called thermals and these are rapidly rising heat waves and they result in turbulence, they result in wind and lifting action like what you see in the first clip. So the first problem seen here is flying at the wrong time of the day, but that was actually preceded by another problem, which I'll let the next user explain. The next comment is by Bruce Pritchett, who says that what you see here is one of the problems with fly-ins. He states that, quote, everyone puts so much effort into getting there that it's tough to stay on the ground when conditions aren't good. So peer pressure or even the thought of simply wasting a drive or wasting a trip will cause pilots to fly when they should call it a no-go. So let's now move on to our next video. Our second video is posted by a user named, and I gotta read it off, 5652240. I guess he wants to remain anonymous. Uh, but the clip is called Alabama Power Parachute Crash, It's Not Me. And I've got to let you know that this is one of my favorite PPC crash videos because of the dialogue that takes place in the background. It's absolutely hilarious. Because it's so funny, I'm going to wait to comment until the video is actually over. Everybody's watching it. <gasps> you see his back tire starting to lift up. Oh. 
problem here should be obvious to all of us. Uh, this pilot, or should I say amateur pilot, he is not allowing enough room to clear those trees on takeoff. And so what he does is he smacks right into them. He's also dangerously close to those power lines, and he's doing a 180 on the ground with the chute inflated, which can cause the lines to get caught in the propeller. What you see here is a lack of training, and I hate to say it, but simply sheer stupidity. So let's now move on to the next video. This next one is posted by a number of users, and it's actually a well-documented case that takes place in Rio Linda, California in December of 2020. Um, and I'll bet you've already seen it. One post is entitled, Paragliding Santa Crashes Into Power Lines. Now there's some uh, different titles for the other videos, but we're gonna stick with that one. Paragliding Santa crashes into power lines. Now, I'm gonna be sharing three different clips from this crash, or three different angles, and I'm gonna be sure to post the links in the description below. So let's go ahead here and get started. Now, the first thing you'll notice here is that this pilot barely clears the fence. So let's now look at another angle, and I'm going to keep quiet so you can hear the dialogue. And Santa's on the go. So once again, you can pretty much see the same thing. He barely clears the fence and the trees before hitting the power lines. And now let's look at how this all concludes. As you can see, the pilot's being rescued by the local fire department, and they're probably being guided by the utility company, making sure that no one is electrocuted. And I read where this Santa Claus here actually knocked out the electric power to over 200 customers. Listen as I share some user comments on what happened here, though I think it's pretty obvious. A user named RMS said this, LOL, as a pilot, I can say that was a pretty awful choice to take off in that direction with multiple obstacles. You see, the problem that's obvious to all of us watching is that his takeoff area is too short and too confined, not allowing enough time to gain the altitude needed to clear those power lines. You know, I'm surprised he even cleared the fence and the trees. A user named Paul Olmsted made another good point. He said that this is, quote, not only illegal, but stupid. First, he says, he's flying in a populated area. And second, I'm sure there's an ordinance about flying from that park. And then he adds, that's gonna be one expensive sleigh ride, Santa. Better hope you had good insurance. Now, Tucker Gott did a really detailed analysis of this crash, and I highly recommend watching his video if you're looking for more information. Uh, I'm gonna be sure to post the link to this video in the description below. So let's now move on to our next crash. This last video is posted by a user named Jennifer Smith, and it's entitled, Power Parachute Crash North Queensland. Uh, this crash takes place in Australia in what appears to be an Aeroshoot brand powered parachute, which is a side-by-side -side seating configuration. Look how he's coming in really low over that crowd. Again, it's pretty obvious what happened here. The pilot was flying too close to that big tree and his line got snagged on the branch, which basically swung him around and slammed him into the ground. I'm hoping no bystander was hurt, but you gotta wonder. Now, right here is a good example of poor judgment or pilot error. 
And this is something you really gotta watch out for as it's pretty common to fly at low altitudes when you're cruising around in a powered parachute. So what's our takeaway from these videos? Well, if you wanna avoid having an accident in a powered parachute that's caused by wind and terrain, then do not fly in the heat of the day, or rather in the middle of the day when thermals are being produced, and do not fly in gusty conditions. Thermals and wind can lead to unexpected uplift, stalls, rollover accidents, and on rare occasions, even collapses. Now, besides the wind, we learned some other things from these videos, such as do not fly without the proper training, do not take off or land too close to trees or at a landing zone that's way too short, and do not fly really low over a crowd of people, and do not fly too close to terrain. So that's it for this video. Be sure to comment in the comment section below. Also be sure to like and share this video and subscribe to this channel.